Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. This is our review on The Last of Us Part 2. We're going to open up with some spoiler-free review, and then we're going to move into the spoiler review. So if you are crazy and insane the way that we are, stick around for the spoiler reviews because we love spoilers. If you don't like spoilers, it's all right, guys. The first part of this review is for you. And without any further ado, let's get into The Last of Us Part 2. Wow, that rhymed way more than I meant it to. I do. Two. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell. And make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. All right, so we just finished a three-day uh, playthrough. Well, not quite three days. Like, uh, two, like two and a half, because we started Friday afternoon... You didn't make it that long, and then we we yeah. did the last two pretty. Yeah, so we so we uh, guys we just uh, yeah. uh, we just made it through the Last of Us. It is a long game. It is a very Even, long game, and I you know we had Matt have the controller for that one. We uh, we did Twitch stream most of it, with the exception of the yeah. very last part when the. PlayStation wanted to blow up on us, and Twitch decided its servers were going to die. Yeah, oh, no, absolutely. I have no idea what was going on at the end there, but for the most part, uh, all of it's up on Twitch uh, as of uh, today, which is uh, June 21st. Yes. Uh, which Father's Day. Uh, so if you guys are watching this in and around Father's Day, happy belated Father's Day to all of you. Indeed, there. indeed. But uh, it was it, it, it was a long game, and uh, let's get into... we're gonna. We, I want to start this review off with the good. Yeah, some good. yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to move into the bad. And then we'll kind of uh, tell you guys like where you know where our thoughts are, and then we're gonna get into spoilers. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, Matt, take it away. I think you want to yes. start off with because uh, you were you were you were controlling it most of the time. So I, I was. I was. And um, I will say this, guys, that uh, the controls for this um, are very tight. I like the shooting. The uh, weapons have a good punch to them. Everything feels very fluid. I like the uh, small UI changes that they did between one and two. That being said. If you were not a fan of the mechanics of The Last of Us 1, this will not do anything to change your mind. It is simply a um, refinement. It's an advancement, yeah. It's an a advancement, refinement a refinement on, the, on, on, on those mechanics. Um, and so while things felt good, if you're not a fan of the way they did in the first one, this will not change your mind at all. Second is I want to talk about how absolutely drop-dead gorgeous the visuals in this game are. The visuals are unbelievably stunning. Yes. I... There were moments when I just went, okay, wh okay, okay, wow. Just, just wow. Just and wow. And Naughty Dog has, for a long time now, really been able to nail that environmental art. Mm -hmm. And just making everything just look so good. And they definitely achieved that here. Everything looks fantastic. And uh, some of the modeling on, like, the characters, the mocap, um, even the detail on, like, the weapons when you go to craft at the bench are just... They're amazing. They are truly amazing. It is a technical the, masterpiece. There, there's a, there, were, uh, there was a scene, and a, again, no, no spoilers here, but there was a scene with fire, specifically a scene with fire, that looked stunning. It, it looked like a movie. The, it, it looked, looked like, like a movie. A movie. It yes. really looked like a movie. Uh, and obviously everybody knows those naughty dog, like, hey, look at we can do, you know, shots, yeah. you know, where the camera pans back and it widens out. And it's everybody knows those yeah, shots. There's absolutely. a few of them in this game, obviously. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, just the the technical side of this is amazing. And before, oh, we, but before we go into story, let's talk about sound. Uh, sound sound is fantastic. Obviously, the um, I believe it's the same man that did the uh, original score for The Last of Us uh, 1. Came back and did a lot of the original mm -hmm. music for this. Music and, was great. And the music is great. The sound design is fantastic. Everything is super crystal clear. I love the way that they do the ambient noise. Um, enemy callouts are a lot more varied, even if you do get some yeah. inconsistencies yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah. Um, but no, it's... Um, and they also tried very hard to uh, try and make these enemies feel like real people. Uh, when you take one down, they'll, uh, another enemy will call out their name and show... Pretty actually, yeah, a, a, pr a pretty the UI, the convincing, NBCs, yeah, the, yeah, the, um, a show of grief, yeah, and um, so no, a very very good sound design. The uh, yeah, only no, the AI was really good on the t on the technical side. Still, uh, one of my a complaint. It's not small, it's not big, but a complaint is uh, a lot of Naughty Dog games kind of have this careful funneling with a lot of the way that they do their level design and the way that they kind of guide the player around, and they might be 
an obvious path that leads to a collectible, and then the you know you'll turn the around mainline and, path which leads to uh, the story, and then you'll turn around and you'll see that this game felt very confused. The, um, it really did. I understand what they were going for. Uh, also, having watched some reviews and whatnot to kind of see uh, uh, to, to to make sure that just what I'm thinking isn't the only thought out there. Right, right. Uh, but one of the things that they said is that uh, they really did try to give you more than just one path to go down. They did, and but I feel I feel like a lot gets lost in the shuffle there because I I know you were watching for most of the playthrough, and mm. obviously you can see it on Twitch is that there was more than one occasion. I'd be in a big open room. I'd have cleared of enemies, and I'd sit there, and I'd go, I have no idea where to go. That that did tend to be an issue on the technical side, is because if you've ever played, you know, uh, Uncharted, The Last of Us, you know... Um, the first one, yeah, yeah. Crash Bandicoot. Well, Crash Bandicoot is literally But that's the whole point, course. right? That's yeah. the point, yeah. right? Is if you've ever played... Naughty Dog has very much a go this direction to complete our games, which um, in this game... Uh, it just felt like uh, you get lost a little bit. You do. You get and lost, and and to the point where I was I was sitting there, and as he's scanning, I'm looking, and I'm, going, hey, what about over here? Hey, what about over here? And I and I got to a point where I actually because obviously he's in combat encounters, and while he's doing that, I was watching for like, okay, where do we go after this is over? Because. In order to progress through the story, and this is a very, very long game. It is. Uh, uh, you really wanted to pay attention to things. And sometimes there's places you would go just were not obvious. That, that is another thing I'll say. And uh, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail with uh, some spoilers. of our, narr our narrative and definitely with the spoiler section. But this game is just long. And it's not like long and like, you know, a open world game long. It, it's long in the you're just getting tired by the end of it, it's kind of an exhausting yeah. game. It's actually probably the most exhausting game I've played in a long time. And uh, uh, that has nothing to do with, you know, their depictions of violence or um, anything. It is simply just the uh, combat encounters and levels run so long that you're sitting there going, am, am I, am were, I, are, are we there yet? Side, there are were, we there, there yet? Were, there were some encounters that I was just like, is this necessary? Actually, there uh, are a fair few of those. There's, there's more yeah, than a few. And in the first game, you had a lot of quiet moments. Yeah. Where, um, uh, like, um, when you're walking through uh, Billstown in the first one, there, you know, the first half of that, you know, when you arrive, is you see maybe two clickers, and then the rest is just. Uh, yeah, a lot of the times character. it was like you could have sufficed with a runner, a clicker, a what, a, you know. And this and one they, was they just like, hey, here's the, 45. And you're just yeah, like, Yeah, they oh want to throw the kitchen God. sink at you. And it just, it, it's a very so, draining so game. There, and it there, runs it, long. It, it was, it was. And so, but overall, I think technically, the sound design gets a 10 in my opinion. Well, I guess the way that our rating system works is we do, we do out of a 12 pack, right? Anything less than a six pack, you need more. You always need more than a six pack for a party. Yeah, and right. So if you, this you, don't, you don't show up to a concert with yeah. only a six-pack of coolers. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah. So if this game is a party, I would give the sound design out of a out of a twelve-pack. I'm going to give the sound design probably probably a ten because uh, my friend stole a few beers from me. Uh, I'm probably giving the visuals. Um, the visuals weren't maybe a nine, maybe a nine out of twelve because. There were just sometimes the visuals were just not yeah, no, I'm as actually gonna, tight. I, I'm going to be a little bit more generous with you. I'm going to give them a 10 for console. And I, wa I want to preface that that okay. for, for the PS4 hardware, which as we all know is seven years old at this point, and obviously I don't have access to a Pro. So seeing this with 4K HDR might have changed that a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give a I'm going to be a little bit more generous looking at the art design. Give them a, a 10 of out of 12 pack. Give them a 10. Yeah. Give them a 10 out of a 12 pack. Okay. Which that is important, guys. A 10 out of a 12 pack because. <laughs> but Indeed. no, but it is important. It is which a, would it, be that, an eight out of ten for normies. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, a little bit more than that, probably an eight and a half uh, yeah, for normies. Like but like no, that. this is what. But it, you know, eight out of a eight out of twelve pack. There, I think uh, mechanically, I cannot speak to it. Mechanically, me me that's, me that's mechanically, your baby. mechanically, I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it an eight pack. An eight, eight. It, it's not a six. A little, little bit more than a six pack, but not. But it's uh, you know, there are so many games out there that are so tight um, mechanically. With the way everything functions, this um, was very functional, and it's definitely a refinement on the first game. But like I said, if you didn't like the first game, this will do nothing to change it for you. And if um, I'm being totally honest, there are some things that did annoy me. They are so uh, committed to the realistic animations that there are times where I found myself getting a little bit frustrated because things wouldn't respond the way I'd want them to in terms of like trying to dodge or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah specifically. Okay. 
Um, and then, uh, so so that's our technical side of it. And I will say this: the prone uh, being able to go prone uh, and actually, use the tall grass was the a nice touch. The prone mechanic. There are a couple things you go. So prone, no, they definitely use. improved it. It's definitely yeah. um, a refinement, but um, it's it's just it's not that narrative next level. Uh, narratively, and this is going to be the last part of our spoiler-free review. Yes. Narratively, this is where the scores start to go. Well, because narr- narratively, it's a mess. And I'm just speaking in very it's broad terms here. It's told um, a chrono- uh, chronologically. So it's told out of order of when the events happen, which, at, at least to me, it made it very confusing to figure out where it was going. There, and th- there, there were th- scenes that should... A- there were sometimes we couldn't tell... Again, we're not giving anything away here. This might be a but there mild, were scenes that this were is a mild spoiler for what I'm going to say. Not a, yeah, not a huge yeah. Point, but I, there were sometimes I couldn't tell. Wait, are we? Because because if you look away for a quick second and you miss the you know what they put up on the screen, you're like, wait, are we past, present, or future? Is this before this event or after that other event? There were. Yes. It was just that. I mean, the, just the and, timeline and, was confusing. I, and I will say this: they set up Sometimes. a lot of they set up a lot of big character moments, and then they have those moments happen, and then try and explain the rationale later. Yeah, and yeah, that, I, that I felt was, that was very confused and very backwards. It's well, like it's trying like to tell a punchline and then set up a joke. Yeah, and, and it just I, doesn't uh, land right. Like you go, oh right, okay, now I understand why I should have cared about that. When they should have just set it up so that you cared originally, right? No, and they should have. Um, they had, there were, there were, man, just narratively there. Sometimes it felt like the characters in the game just didn't know. The characters in the game didn't know what lane they were in. No, no, and they, that was really hard for I, me. Their identities and their morals seem to be a little bit um, flexible. We'll say something that we'll uh, discuss them at one moment. We'll then turn around the very next. They'll be glorifying that same yeah. thing. And it's no, it's very confusing. And then also, we don't get a lot of character motivation. There's um, a couple factions in the game. Uh, There's more than, more than a there, there are four. There are four that we know about. Well, and yeah. um, obviously, we'll go a lot more in depth in the spoiler section of this video. But the... Um, you don't get a lot of backstory on them. Like, you know, obviously the hunters in um, The Last of Us 1, they were kind of a generic name for people who were essentially bandits, highwaymen, people who were at the so, at the, so far gone into desperation that they would do horrible things to survive. These are more clearly defined factions that have some sort of identity, but we're never really given never a chance really to told explore what their identity that identity. Is. And then... Uh, narratively too, and this is something that just, th- this is so bad is there is, um, without giving without going into spoiler reviews, there is more than one scene and more than one time in this game when they perform character assassinations. There are absolutely. To and what was in the original. And I will say this, um, as kind of a, just, you know, blanket statement is that if you are a big fan of the characters in The Last of Us, if you are a big fan of Joel and Ellie and Tommy and all those, this is a safe skip. I, if you're really curious, I would look up a Let's Play or watch a Twitch stream. I, I, would, I, would, not, I would not give money to this. It is very we, disappointing we, in terms it, of how it, the story plays uh, out. Uh, the story was very, it was very disappointing, and obviously before we get into spoilers, I think it's, it, it's safe just, to say it's, that it's it will no longer... The, the PlayStation is literally two inches this way between the board. Uh, it, we will be uninstalling it. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's it's not worth a no, second No, it, it's a through. weak, jumbled main story that is held up by some truly remarkable the, the, flashback the, sequences, but the problem is, the, is that the flashback sequences, they are a glimmer of what should have been, not what we got. And that makes it more depressing. And it on does. top of that, the narrative was so jumbled and garbled and like they couldn't make up their minds so much it's that hard to follow character motivations are a big thing for me because it, they you, you never find out why these characters are behaving well, here's this the problem way. what i'm it, the, the the bad overshadows the good in this game uh, very much so it, i'd say mechanically I'd say, mechanically it's great visually it's beautiful sound design is stunning the sound just not even just the music but just everything just the overall sound but, the, design, but yes. then but then when it comes to story and character and I, let's be truly honest the story is the main reason why a lot of people got into the last of us in the first place. it's why people like naughty dog games yeah and and the story on this one is a rushed convoluted poorly p- uh paced mess that just 
It didn't do it for me. It did not do it for me. In it, fact, it, 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 it actively and, and, aggravated and, and, me in a lot of ways. And, and, and the problem was is that when the story did have good moments... It was always undermined by the fact that you knew... Well, by the time we got to the end of the game, I think I told you uh, before we started recording, I told you, I was just like, you know, there are some good moments in there, but I just don't remember them. And that's the length of the game. The length of the game the is not padding, a good thing. That, that's another actually that's very the other important thing, too, point. Is that the is, narrative, the the, the narrative the pa- brings The padding this, in this like game is... Is ridiculous. It's like there you watch. It, it's like watching all the filler episodes to Dragon Ball Z, but never watching the episodes. So that, that where they, yeah, where it's actually it, it, resolved. It, it, no, there, there's so, there's so many plot filler. points that are um, they're just th- unnecessary, they're, or they're so stretched out. There are even some characters that are just unnecessary. There's a th- 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 timeline that is just unnecessary. There's dialogue. I'm sorry, the the cutscene dialogue, fantastic. Some of the incidental dialogue was some of the incidental dialogue was very was strong, but a lot, a lot of it, ninety percent of the incidental dialogue and this is sounded like the actors were talking like this. Indeed, and this is absolutely. what we're gonna do, and this is how I feel. And hey, look at that thing over there, and maybe we should go this. Well, way. they were trying and to it, go so hard for a somber thing, they kind of lost a lot of the character identity. I think. Well, and again, and you didn't hear any voice inflection no, until so, the cutscenes, which was not true for the first one. So there. So would that actually dock points off of audio design then, seeing as uh, voice acting is a no, part no, no, of that, audio? that would that would dock points. Points off of narrative and character. Okay. Okay. Off of narrative. Just so I know where we're. No, yeah. no, no. But no, because the audio, because they sounded great. Oh, the audio uh, recording the quality audio is obviously through the roof. Sounded yeah. phenomenal. But no, oh, yeah. that that's on character and narrative because. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And especially yeah. in The Last of Us One, you got a lot of character and a lot of narrative out of the incidental. Oh, indeed. Having in fact, been that's a where a lot of the, watched I, just the cutscenes and then I played through it with you. There's a lot you actually. There missed. was a lot that I missed. I didn't miss that much, but what I did miss. And when I finally saw it, it made me appreciate it that much more. The rest more. more. And, and this game like, really wow. struggles. And I think a big um, design choice that really contributes to this is that they leave your uh, player character alone so, uh, that, so that very much. That was one thing as well is that if you whatever player character you are, because there are multiple player characters, uh, unlike in The Last of Us when we all went and we ran around with Joel or Ellie, uh, we ended up... Uh, uh, not with somebody a lot. Yeah, and in you fact, were on the times that we were with somebody was, I would say it was less than 30% of the overall total time that so we were with So definitely what it feels like. Someone. I'd have to go back and look, but you're on your own a lot in this game. And it uh, yeah, it kind of robs the game of the identity, especially considering if you look at the old design documents and what Naughty Dog was talking about with the first one, is that they took the um, Tenzin uh, segment from Uncharted 2, where you're traveling with this companion and you're building this uh, relationship with them, right? And obviously, Ten's in the, the Himala- in the Himalayas, where you go and you find the uh, monastery. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right, yeah. um, and uh, you, build, uh, you build this relationship with them. And obviously, Tenzin doesn't speak English. Drake doesn't speak, uh, what would that be? Uh, it's not Tibetan. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, and so, but they have to learn how to communicate. And it's a very, you know, bond-building moment. And that was kind of the core philosophy of the first la- uh, game, The Last of Us. Where, uh, obviously, you see the relationship of Joel and Ellie build over time. And you didn't get a lot of that in this. And I think that's a very big disappointment I on the narrative side for me. I don't think we got any of that. I, I don't feel that we got any character building moments or character uh, uh, relationship moments uh, outside of physical moments. Uh, and that's... <laughs> that's r- well, and obviously at this point, there's one moment that's going to turn into a meme rather quickly. Oh, there will be. We'll, we'll get but to that But we'll one. get to that. But I yeah. honestly, at this point, I'm going to score it. I think the narrative the, the narrative for me is a 0 out of 12. The narrative, the characters. I mean, I'll be generous. It's a 2 out of 12. I'll be as generous as I can be. I, I, I won't be because these are characters that I've, you know, the, this is a game I, um, or the, the first a, The Last of Us was a game I'd show people who weren't into gaming to show what gaming could do. And the way that they handled this narrative is just, it is so disrespectful to not only the fans, but the, to the characters and to the world that they built. Well, and the, the, I, writing, I, the writing is, it, the writing is insulting. And I, 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 am, intelligence. I am absolutely going to give, I'm going to give it a, uh, a one out of 12. And I'd actually give it like a negative two. It owes me beer for playing it. Obviously, that's not a scoring thing. I'm not going to go, but a one no, out of 12. A one out of 12, yeah. yeah. I, if I, I just, 
Only and the only reason I give it a two is because there was about three or four moments. The only with a couple of the player. That's the only reason it doesn't get a zero. Yeah, that's the only reason it doesn't get a zero is because yeah. there were there were a few moments and there were some moments that that made me smile enough to kind of forget what I had just seen. But the problem was is that even after that, you're reminded that oh, this is so. That is our spoiler free review. So I, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, game a wrap up score and overall. It is a three out of twelve. It is not even a six pack. It's not a six pack. We need more. We need more if we're we gonna party. More. We need if more. you want to party, you need more. And I, I agree, I wholeheartedly agree with Matt is that even though the sound, the visuals and the mechanics are are, are good, they're, they're, it is it they are not enough to save this game. No, they're they're, they're, they're this is so a story based game and, and the story is they are not so, very good. I, I it's think just not. I, I think a, I, I think an overall score, I'm a, I agree with you, a three out of twelve. It just it fell flat in so many areas, and the only reason it is a three out of twelve is because of the visuals, the sound, and the mechanics. That's the uh, that's part of the only. The, the reason mechanics are perfectly competent, and the sound and visuals are gorgeous. The, 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 they're just, they're just but and, and sometimes don't stunning. don't they're, I would not, I cannot recommend this game under, I, I on that alone. I, I, can't, I just can't. I can't. You can't party with this game. You can't. If you you know you don't you don't show up to a party with less than a six pack, and I'm sorry, Naughty Dog showed up with less than a six pack. This is the narrative's a mess, guys. And if you are a fan of the first game, I I'd say this is a very safe pass. And if you safe are truly pass. truly curious, I would recommend finding a let's play or a uh, Twitch yeah, stream if you're that curious. And yeah. that concludes our spoiler-free review. We are now getting into spoilers. What the hell happened? I I, I don't know. Here, let's uh bring up our little chapter list here. Um, we can go through this uh point by point by the chapters here. No, this this what? game this game is a clusterfuck, dude. It, it, th- dude there, there's no other way to say it, dude. I, the, the 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 intro and then even more so, like the marketing just lied. It, oh, it's a deliberate lie. That whole scene where uh, Ellie and she has the hands that go over her mouth and uh, what the hell are you doing here? And it's Joel. And you think I'd let you do this alone? It's a lie. It, it's that, a blatant, that does not it's a blatant the, lie. That does not exist in the game. And then, and then, uh, I'm sorry. The intros, because 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 we kind of knew some of the spoilers going into yeah, it. We, we did. It, that, it'd be hard not to, especially since uh, you and I don't really care about spoilers to begin with. No, no. And, and so, it, it's um. So I obviously looked them up, and I'm I'm not gonna lie, dude. If uh, we weren't reviewing this, I I would have skipped it. I would have just passed on this game and just watched the let's play myself. Um. No. No. This this is a total clusterfuck of a story, and it, it legitimately harms uh even the first game's integrity that's the one thing that i said i didn't want it to do in one of our twitch streams oh i know i know once we ended when we because we 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 played through the last of us and i was like my my biggest fear my biggest fear is that it harms the first game and it does and it does because there's no there is no way to think about these characters in the same light in the same you cannot that you can't isolate them i'm sorry you get this intro scene with joel and his brother tommy and Joel tells his brother about uh, what he had to do. And Tommy's like, you know what? I don't know if I'd have chose something different. And I'm going to take this to my grave with me. And it's a fantastic display of loyalty between the two brothers. fucking matter. matter. Yeah. It does not. And that's the biggest thing is everything. And how, how, how much? And obviously we'll get you know to these so, more in so. depth as we get there. But so much of this game is pointless. So much of it is just, oh, we're subverting your expectations. Please stop doing this. Please, for the love of God, just tell the story without trying to feel clever. Because it's not clever. Because the second that you ask a question, the second that you ask a question, you go, well, wait a minute. Why Why did it do? And then you answer it and you go, wait, did, 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 did they just not think about that? And they did. I just, I don't. I, I don't think, think they, I don't think they thought about it. And so let's, uh, you know, we've got the prologue and the prologue is almost, no, it's not almost. It is misleading. It makes you think you're playing a better game than you are. I, I, I smiled through the pro- prologue. I smiled where I he get, like, where Joel gives Ellie the guitar and says he's going to teach yeah, her. And, and but there's this thing between them, and they don't know. What, like, and you I, can tell it's a little awkward because Ellie doesn't quite believe him. Yeah, Joel I, obviously I is lying. I, 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 it was just the. And then what the fuck happened to Joel? He was this nervous, like I'm trying to earn your trust, kind of like. Well, it's because Naughty Dog clearly. Uh, thought that he made the wrong decision. As with a lot of internet uh, forum posters out there, Naughty Dog clearly believes that Joel is the villain of The Last of Us 1. 
Which and, is, I, and as we've talked about repeatedly, that's not the case because I want to see, you know, well, a plan. And, that, and that's the thing out of here the fireflies. is, is the, ent- the entire premise of this game is accepting that Joel made the wrong decision. And as you and I have spoken about many times, what was the distribution? How are they going to synthesize it more out of one host? Was she the one host that they could synthesize this out of? They didn't know. They had none of those. How apparently we found out in this game there were more than one there were more than just fireflies. There were other warring factions. How, indeed, indeed how there were there were insurgency this? groups all over the country. Yeah, how so, the fuck were you planning to spread it to them? Yeah, how are you going to get this? There there are so many questions involved with this vaccine. And that Joel was the bad guy here. And this game just says, well, you just accept that, right? No, I don't. No, no, I never accepted that. Joel made the right decision because there is no way. And there are videos out there from much uh, larger channels than ours and much better channels than ours who have gone over this. Who have. Oh, absolutely. 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 Joel, who who were like, how, how, how does the vaccine work? How do you make the vaccine? Uh, Like we know that like uh, to make a vaccine, you have to have thousands and thousands of people usually with many, many different tests. And samples with, and, with and samples. viability. And, and, you and, have and with modern day, not broke ass down apocalyptic yeah, yeah, no technology, kidding, right? where, where are the lab testings? Well, we were just going to buy that one doctor. And, and was that's gonna, just bad science, too. And that's too. the shit part, too, is this one doctor, which is a mer- very main. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to him. Yeah. This one doctor was just a miracle guy that could. So not only could he. So why he the why, why the hell didn't he do that earlier then? If if this was really the one thing he needed, why wasn't that you know explained better? No, it's a retcon. It's a retcon. And that's the bullshit part too. Is they retconned it. So you get this prologue with, with and it's a wonderful prologue that actually made me smile with with Joel and Tommy. And, and after hearing there, all the negative from the leaks and whatnot, you sit there and you watch that prologue and you go. Maybe people are overreacting. I, I genuinely thought they were. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then so you know, now you're in control of Ellie. You're past the pro. Like, you're in control of Ellie, and you get to this. What, what is the first thing we get? We get teenage bullshit. Dude, it was The Last of Us Twilight or One Tree Hill, or it was. The soap opera, dude, you know, teen drama. You know, that, and, and it's this love triangle between and Jesse. And that never stopped. No, never. And so you get Jesse, who used to date Dina, who is now with Ellie, but not really because they're kind of in the world. Jesse's not with Ellie. Dina's with Ellie, which is cool. Yeah, sorry. I wish I knew more about Dina because apparently that's who Ellie ends up with. Yeah. But we don't know anything about this character. Sure, her character is never explored. Jesse's either. For lack of a better term. He gets completely thrown. Here's everything I know about Dina. Dina looks at Ellie and all, and what I know, Dina looks at Ellie and goes, want some fuck? And that's literally it. That's pretty much it. That, that's her character. That's Dina's character. Dina looks at Ellie and says, you're hot. I want to do you. And I know nothing else. And they try to play it off like there's something more than that, but they never explain it. I have no idea beyond the what, fact that they, they are... They, they, what they, are their motivations? What are their shared interests? What do they do together? We saw none of that. We got the snowball fight. That's about it. That's how Dean is introduced. We got the snowball fight. And that was it. And then you get this character, Jesse, who I started to like. And this is, guys, this is a spoiler. I like Jesse all the way up until the point where they shot him in the fucking face. Like instant, like just pop, done. Yeah. And all he did was open a door. Oh, I know. Jesse's biggest mistake was he opened a door. In the wrong fucking Do building. not, d- yeah. gentlemen, stop holding doors open for the ladies. Because you're right. going to get shot in the face. So, you know, and then we get this uh, patrol sequence, right? And we're told throughout this that Ellie was just desperate to be able to go on patrols. But Joel was, like, trying to... Which we didn't find out for, like, what, 20 hours in? Or, so, well, no, at that, that it point it was 20, probably 10. No, it, no, it I'm sorry. While. It was a long time. It, it was a long time. It, was, it felt no, like 20. I, it absolutely I don't felt think, like 20. I don't think we found um, out any of that until 8 to 10 hours. And, and that, that, that is the thing that pisses me off the most about this story is that they have these wonderful flashbacks that mean jack shit. Because by the time you get to them, characters are dead. Yeah. What the fuck? So anyway, so they're on the patrols, which supposedly uh, patrols mean a lot to Ellie. Because that apparently there, there are hordes of infected running around and raiders everywhere, hunters. Yeah. So these patrols are a very serious deal. And no, they find some old Firefly's uh, weed base, get high, and decide to... Or not, no, not Firefly. It was a guy from Jackson. Well, it was a guy from Jackson. He was a Firefly. Oh, yeah. He was a Firefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, you know, they find, they find his base, and so they find all his old weed stash, and so what do they do? They shirk duty to get high yeah, Ellie, and, who and, is and, so and bang concerned. each other. You need to go relieve Joel and Tommy. 
But Ellie and Dina need to take a night to fuck each other and smoke some pot. But what a wonderful and character building moment. And it contributed nothing to the story. And, you know, in a different context, that scene could have very well worked. It would have been fine if they'd done it Dude, after there Patrol. there are a lot of scenes that could have worked in this game that didn't fucking work because they were in this game. Because they were in the wrong context. They were paced terribly. And, yeah, they were in this game, not the yeah. one that... It, there, there is a good game in here. It's just... It's, it's under the surface, and it, this is a game that needed somebody to rein the writers in. And be like, yes, yes, no, 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 yes, no. Yes. Um, and then, so after... Ellie and Dina fuck, which is what we know about their relationship. Because I'm sorry, that's all that, that's I know. That's all we get. That's, that's it. For they 20 hours. A, they, we don't even get their first kiss scene, which is talked do, about constantly during this session. Until the end of the fucking thing. And you don't know why they're into each other. You still don't know what attracts these two young women to each other. And that pisses me off. I mean, How we, am I supposed to care for about this? For, for uh, proper context, here's talk about another Naughty Dog game with uh, Drake and Elena. What attracts those two together? They both find each other attractive. They both love adventure. They're both history buffs. They both like to travel the world. They love each other's tenacity and their they ability like the strength to of fight will. through. They the like their intelligence. Will. Exactly. These are things that are missing from you know, Ellie and Dina. And they've had moments where, 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 where we actually saw with the two where they built that relationship. There was no relationship building here. Dina is... And that's not and, to say... And, so. and let's not forget the Martha moment. Oh, we'll get there. Um... Martha, why did you say that name? It's 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 almost it's, it's, the it's there. same. It's it's thing. there. It's there. Whole as soon as we got to it in so, our in our Twitch stream and at about thirty seconds before it, it happened, was I was bad. like, and I was like, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna do it. And they did. And and, and I did. was like, but no, we'll totally get there. Keep in mind, we're we're not even past Jackson okay. yet. Okay. So so after the uh, you know the DTF moment, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, we. And keep in mind, throughout this entire prologue, we're s we're swapping back and forth between Ellie and the new character Abby. Well, no, we hadn't up until this point. We haven't really seen. Well, yeah, we did see Abby. We did we see did. Abby we, in the one scene before, which side. Abby Abby wants to go to Jackson because there's someone she wants to kill. Spoiler alert: It's fucking Joel. Which yeah, well yeah. Fuck. So you know, all of a sudden, there's this massive horde of infected, massive horde, and. Here's when I... And wh where, the, where did they come from? Where the fuck did they come from? It's winter in Wyoming. We live in Colorado. Our winters are bad enough. And yet, for some reason, fungus is allowed... This fungus grows in highly cold, treacherous weathers, which most funguses don't. That just breaks logic to yeah, me. Yeah, cordyceps itself, the real cordyceps in the, this world, the one that attacks ants, Yeah, lives in the tropics. Yeah. It doesn't do so good in winter in Wyoming. No, and so that was just... And that might be a nitpick... But, a, a bit, but because but, it's a plot contrivance, because how we get Abby and Joel into the same room is this horde of infected. So if you're going to say this led to that, you've got to explain the horde. And they, they barely did. And the reason that the I horde mean, is important barely is... Barely. String thin. My house is dangling from a helicopter hanging from some thread. And the reason this was important is, as I've seen pointed out um, a, a bit now by some other users, is... Um, Joel was able to spot an ambush just based on the guy's behavior in one, but trusts a random girl showing up from nowhere in well, two. Well, and so here, here, let's let's. And back, so without me, without that adrenaline, that panic moment of we're all fighting infected, maybe she's fleeing the infected too. Without that moment, it doesn't work. So you have to set up why there are that many infected. Well, not only that, let's get into the one thing because we're talking about this scene. Right. I remember I looked at you and said. Because we were swapped. Yeah, we were. Why the fuck are we getting tutorial with this character we know nothing about? Yeah, indeed. And that's how you knew the game was not about Joel and Ellie. No, because, it wasn't. Because your tutorial was with this new character that we knew nothing about. For Christ's sake, Ellie's a boss fight. Um, Ellie is a bot that was... That was frustrating. That so, was so. We're doing tutorial with this Abby character. We're still playing with Abby. Abby's getting chased and again, by we're, hordes. We're told nothing. We see Abby talking to a dude who's named Owen, and he says, "Oh, Mel's pregnant." Like we know who the fuck Mel is. Yeah, exactly. So, and again, it's teenage bullshit because you can tell dude, those two used to bang. Now Mel and Owen are banging, and he knocked her up. 
which was the exact opposite because Jesse and Dina used to bang, but now Dina and Ellie are dating, but Dina's pregnant. Yeah. No, and, th- th- and it's, it's they, th- Naughty Dog is trying so hard stupid. to set up the parallels between the two groups, but fail to address the main moral impetus here is that the only reason Abby is there is because she is so driven by vengeance, she is hunting Joel down. She get, went there with the intention of murder. And then the we scene. get to the, the scene. scene. Yes. Now, I want everybody to know this scene, the way that it was kind of described online is that we were at about the 50% mark because it's just the way that people said it. Here's the scene. And then you play as this character for the other 50% of the game. And I'm like, wait a minute. This scene, we played this game for 25 hours on easy. Yeah. So we could burn through it. And it still took us that long. I blame a lot of that on the level design and getting turned around. Yeah, but but it still is a twenty to thirty hour game. So and I think we were we were about twenty two hours by the end of it, I think. Something like that, yeah. Twenty two hours. And in the first hour and a half we get to Joel just gets done saving Abby's ass. Abby welcomes Joel and Tommy to their hideout. Joel and Tommy then give up their names, where they live, their information, everything. It's, hi, stranger. You want my social security? And then this girl Dumbass. who we Instantly will, shoots from Joel now on leg. for the rest of this. Biceps we, McGee? Uh, yeah, we will call her Biceps Abby. Oh, Biceps Abby. Okay. Because Biceps McGee people might. But Biceps Abby, take it away. I always felt that was funny that her nickname in the entire thing was Abs, and she's, you know, her character model is this Jack thing. I'm like, isn't that kind of a little yeah. on the nose? <laughs> but biceps, uh, Abby. But no, so what, what, what Abby does is use those wonderful, lovely biceps. She shoots Joel in the leg. Tommy gets pistol whipped into unconsciousness. Poor Tommy. He gets the shit under the stick so much in this game. It's um, not even funny. And so, you know, you get a no, and then he gets pistol whipped into unconsciousness. And you see, you know, Abby and Joel in one of the few lines that that man gets to be the badass he was goes, go ahead and say whatever speech you have prepared. And then gets beat to fuck with a golf club. And here's here's the bitch of it, right? Is that they don't even have the balls to show him getting beat to death. You see her swing the thing. You see the blood effect. And it cuts to black and you're with Ellie again, who now realize that she might have done screwed the pooch. Yeah, because instead of going out and trying to find Joel and Tommy, she was doing that teenage bullshit. Dude, this this game is so, so much teenage so, bullshit. The teenage and it's with Abby and her friends and, and it's with and Ellie, Ellie and, and oh my god. And so Jesse comes and finds them. You know, if I wanted to watch One Tree Hill, I would but watch But Jesse one somehow Tree. finds the one place they're holed up and while they're still, you know, only semi dressed. Yeah. And, you know, he goes, the fuck you guys doing here? And he goes, really? Because Tommy and Joel never checked in. And they're not where they're, they're not at their and post. And this is why I like Jesse. Well, up until he gets shot in the face. Yeah, right. Rest <laughs> in peace, dude. You deserve better. Rest in peace, Jesse. You deserved a better game. Uh, it's, um, but he no. He did. He just. And he sits there and he goes, what the fuck are you guys doing? You need to go find Joel and Tommy because they're not at their post. And Ellie goes, you can see the wheels turning at this point. She goes, shit, that's not good. They wouldn't do that. And so she ends up somehow finding the uh, the uh, ski resort or chalet or whatever it is. It's called the chalet. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, where she is, and she busts through the door, and Joel's already beat to hell. And she's sitting there, and she gets you know obviously you know wrestled to the ground and whatnot. And she's sitting there telling Joel, "Get up, get up, get up!" And the dude's not moving. And no. so Abby goes, and she just plants that golf club straight up Andrew Ryan into his skull. And would you kindly? Yeah. And we are not told anything about why oh and by the way guys this is literally the equivalent of getting like as of this point this is probably the equivalent of getting to the death of robert in the first game a ballpark maybe meeting joel maybe meeting ellie joel dies within the first five percent of total gameplay in this absolutely five percent the first so you now have to sit there and play 95% of the game without that interaction. But the game's going to cheat, and we'll get there. Oh, my God. And so after this, after Joel's death, you get this very ham-fisted, very 
just a melodramatic scene where Ellie's at his grave. And this scene could have worked if it, the pacing was better. There was, it, it was just, th- this scene, I'm like, it's like Ellie didn't care. She, I'm she's sorry. She's so were, monotone, and she's so, And well, that was a fault of the and we director. Know she's, because, we know she's pissed at Joel, but they don't say why yet. But here's and the thing: is that's a fault of the director. I anybody think who's the, played one could probably I, I guess. I think the but director blatantly told the voice actor, "No, no, no. There's too much emotion there. Tone yeah. it down." And so Ellie had to talk like this the whole game. And damn it, I'm going to kill these motherfuckers. Can we? I'm going to get them. I need to kill I'm the motherfuckers. Ki- I'm going to kill these motherfuckers. You can't stop me. Yeah. You're fucking dead. Like what is this? And it's just like that's is this it. NPR. What the fuck? Tonight on and beating your head in radio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, and that really, Dude, and I, no, and I mean, and that's ob- where the incidental dialogue just fucking. Oh, some of it is so corny and so poorly delivered. You just know that because these voice actors, you know, Ashley Johnson, uh, um, fuck, who played Abby? Um, I just said it. Laura Bailey, um, Troy Baker. All these are fantastic voice actors, and they you know they robbed. can do better. They have they done were better. Robbed. They've consistently done better. And and it's not the voice actors. It's not goddamn the voice actors. And delivered there, it. Th- there's this scene, and Tommy comes over at this point, and this is where you know. Keep in mind, his brother's just gotten his head bashed in, Negan style, right? I didn't believe it from Tommy. And he's sitting there going, "We don't have the men to spare to do this smart." Okay, valid. We don't even know if that's who the group they represent. No, people don't wear you know fucking logos unless they're all in the same group. They right. don't wear the same logo unless they're all in the same group. Yeah. So. You know, and then, oh, well, you know, wh- how are we going to even find them? It's, uh, Tommy, they killed your brother. Uh, well, the one thing I would say is that and Tommy, mind, this Tommy went off to go get these sons of bitches. And I know, but we don't find that out until Maria shows up and shows a note. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, and then Ellie, I still... Hell, Maria was probably the most consistent then out we, of the OG cast. And then we go through... And that... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the plot. And then from here, we can uh, pretty much skip Seattle Day One. We can we, Se- yeah, we, we can, can actually skip all the way until Seattle back uh, Seattle Day One Part Two. Uh, basically, because, because out, the, out of all all these segments, everything from when you show up to Seattle, which is to three when days you of find Seattle. the theater, the biggest plot level, uh, revelation in the main plot is that Dina is pregnant with Jesse's kid. And uh, Ellie finally told Dina that she was immune because... Well, she already told her that, but she didn't fucking believe her. Well, no, because of hormones and whatever. But there's li- that's it, guys. And then Ellie goes and she wants to go kill some people. And, and uh, so she and does. so she goes and she kills the people that who she finds pictures of from this person that was supposedly there, which... Not even gonna get into that. And, uh, no, like, no. Her, the character's she, name is Leah, and by the time you find her, she's already dead from one of the and factions. So you get all these pictures, and she goes, "Holy crap! I recognize these people. These are the people that." These are the Joel. people that. Yeah. And so Ellie goes on this revenge spree, but she should maybe looking for Tommy. Kind of, maybe. It's brought up only when we need some conflict between the characters. And that's uh, it. Because Jesse will say, let's go kill these fuckers. And Ellie will say, no, we need to find oh, Tommy. Oh, uh, here's one. And then Ellie will say, we need to go kill these fuckers. And Jesse will say, we here's need to find Tommy. Here's what we need Tommy. to bring up. In, in Seattle Day 1 with Ellie. Because there's also a Seattle Day 1 with Abby. But in Seattle Day 1 with Ellie, I couldn't figure out if Ellie and Dina thought Tommy and Joel were justified or not. They oh, I know. They, 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 they would find these... Um, Victims that were supposedly left, you know, th- they were Tommy's victims, right? And they supposedly sa- we, that was never it confirmed. was never confirmed. And so they'd sit there and they'd be like, "Wow, I didn't know Tommy was capable of this." And then, not two seconds later, they'd be slitting dudes' throats. Well, and not even just in the game, but even in some, they were like, "I do the same thing." Oh, I know. And then, and then five minutes later, how could they do this? I know. And, and, and you're like, just a what pick the, a lane, pick a fucking lane. And so Seattle, so literally, so at, at this point, we played for an additional 10 hours on top of the first two. Well, let's get to, let's talk about nothing. The, let's talk about the museum scene, because this is both amazing and pisses me off. Because let's this is a scene. Let's talk about our first flashback. Of many. No, this was ripped out of a better game. Because it this. is Ellie, maybe on her 15th or 16th birthday. You know, and Joel has a surprise for her, and she's been practicing the guitar that we saw in the intro, mm-hmm. the prologue. She's learned how to swim. 
and they find a museum and it's uh, the entire thing is Joel and Ellie once again that dynamic relationship yeah then they're looking at the dinosaurs and they're looking at the space exhibit Mm -hmm. and they're you know you can tell that you know they're actually starting to warm up to each other again it felt like last of us Finally, and keep in mind this is probably you see after Joel, what he's trying to be eight hours again to this girl. This girl is appreciating everything he's doing, and you, j- oh my god, dude, it was a long time, and I, I smiled through this, and I was like, and here's the problem: is not enough that the game had gone by at this point for me to go, okay, the rest of the game is tanked, and I was like, wow, it's that glimmer of hope. It was a glimmer of hope, and it was another fucking lie well because by the time you always see this you go oh wait yeah this is a great scene but joel's already fucking dead because joel yeah and you were like wow this is really oh that's right joel's dead fuck yeah and so you know the, the whole um seattle day two is just asinine you've got the uh Ellie's, oh. gonna, Ellie's gonna go hunt down somebody. I think it's Nora. Seattle Day Two was Hillcrest because we're gonna go find Tommy, right? Oh, and that's that a, was where the trailer line lied was, and said that was gonna be Joel. Obviously, he, it's not gonna be Joel because he got his head bashed. Yeah, no, in. his head is bashed in, and, and so we're thinking it's gonna be Tommy. And oh, they just you know brother swapped here. Yeah, and no, it's Jesse. No, it's Jesse. Which, Jesse X Machina. And then we forget about Tommy we forget about Tommy. Tommy. And keep in mind they're hinting. Oh, there's a lone, you know, stray. There's an intruder. It's a single it's a male. male. It's a single male. And He's so this is subverting like, our expectations again. And it's fucking Jesse. And it's, you know, and I, by I, the way, I, Jesse, I like do Jesse. You, do you guys know who Jesse is? Because I fucking don't. I liked I, his performance was strong enough. That I started, poor, I started liking him. I started liking him right before he opened the door. And, and yeah. then there's just no more Jesse after he opens that door. Jesse, Men, just shouldn't stop open that opening door. doors for women. Just don't open doors for women. He held the just door open for Ellie, it. and he paid the ultimate just, price. Just don't I mean, do goddamn. that. That's just that's just not what men do yeah, anymore. I know. And so but you know what, dude? I wouldn't pass it past these sons of bitches to be like, see, men, women can open the door. Fuck, you know, like I wouldn't. Don't don't give them ammunition. Anyway, they might. I'm sorry. Don't these give them bastards. Ammu- don't give them me ammunition. Off, dude. Ammunition. Don't do it. So anyway, so the only sa- uh, salient point out of this entire day is the Seraphites, which are one of the factions, and yeah. we know we know they're a cult. We and know the, the and here's the thing: the only reason that the Seraphites are even in this game are to strengthen the character of Abby, who just got done taking tea time with Joel's fucking brain dome. Yeah. Next time you want to practice your four swing, go to a driving range. Anyway. Oh, uh, okay. Next time I practice, I'm going to go outside and find some neighbors. <laughs> God. Like, that's what the game says I should do. But remember, guys, violence is bad. Violence violence leads to violence, and violence is a no-no. And no, the no, o- no, 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 no. the only way to break it's... the cycle is to forgive. Anyway. so that, Literally, guys, that's literally the moral. The whole f- that's literally the moral. You're welcome. You save 60 bucks. Yeah. No, and so you know, this, the whole point of introducing this group is, and we, we're told nothing about it. We know they're a cult. We know that they scar their members. And we know that they're uh, vaguely religiously fanatical. We're not sure what that religion is. We don't is. even find out that the religious fanaticism is from them until way later in the game. Way later. You just see pictures of the prophet, and you're just like, is that the scars? And you, there's some dialogue alluding to it, but it's never confirmed I until mean, like, way later. Unless there's some notes that we just missed. Oh, entirely possible. I was but guys, if you're quick. just if you're just going through this and you're just casually playing and you're not going for every findable, I call them findable. They're collectibles. They're findables because I suck at gamer. You t- don't collect them. You find them. Yeah, you find them. You don't collect yeah, them. You yeah, find them. Dude. They're findables. They're not collectible. You don't collect them because we're not collecting them. We're just finding them. So when you get all the findables, <laughs> that's gonna piss. <laughs> He's so many stealing people. findables. He's <laughs> stealing find stealing <laughs> valuables. He anyway. suspects now. Uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful a comedian, comedian we like. Anyway, yeah, just the way he said that, I yeah, yeah, reference. But, but no, it's I don't understand why they're even in this game. And hell, I wouldn't even know their names. They're called Scars by Abby's group, and they're the Seraphites. But I don't know outside of third uh, reading the notes if you'd ever yeah. find that out on your own. Yeah, so. At this point, we're Seattle no, that's Day not true. 3. There's a character that explains it. We're at Seattle Day oh, 3. Oh, no, 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 no. We've got another one of our infamous flashbacks. Because we are now about 12 oh. to... We are now about 12-ish to maybe 15 hours in, depending on how fast you're going. And now we are finally figuring out why Ellie was pissed at Joel. She went back to the hospital on her own overnight. Utah, Salt Lake, Wyoming. Looked it up. It's 230 miles. Um, I think we looked on foot. It takes three days. We figured cut that by half because of treacherous terrain and all that. So about a day and, and a half on horseback. 
Because keep in mind, a horse can't gallop yeah, you know, yeah, for a day straight. No, no, but yeah. a horse is definitely going to be able to go a lot longer. Plus, you got to stop and rest. Plus, so plus the horse got about a day and a half. So Ellie gets there, and we hear this tape. And I am 90% sure this tape is Abby. This girl could have been the cure for mankind. And even if we found her, it wouldn't I matter know. anyway because yeah. the one person who could have made the cure is dead now. And I was like, wait a second. Why did Abby make a tape recording? We're assuming, which but then was left in a I'm not duffel bag. It's actually Abby. I, I, we should listen to that scene again. We, we should. Because I'm pretty sure it's Abby. I swear to God, it's Abby. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you and what. I'm we'll, like, check, we'll, okay, check, we'll, we'll check who, the bot after Who this. in the hell? Makes a tape recording. Because in the first game, these tape recordings were left by people who were long dead. They were holed up somewhere. They were trying to survive. They were locked in a room. This was just a duffel bag. Just Perfectly pristine. Oh, and by the way, it also had a embroidered the, Firefly logo on it. Like, I didn't realize that they actually had embroidery. Like, they were able to manufacture, like, custom merch. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching the Firefly YouTube, and don't forget for your end of apocalypse blazers and duffel bags. <laughs> check out our Teespring store, and you can have yourself some Firefly merch too. Yeah. Let's get into the video. Fucking stupid. Yeah, right. That's and what so, some of this. And, feels. this is, this and a is lot such of a short scene too. It's literally Ellie walks into room. And by the way, all the, bo- bag, all the bodies are cleared out, so apparently there were some fireflies left. So why is this duffel bag, which the bodies were cleaned out? Why is there a duffel bag there? Well, yeah, who left this there? Who, you know, who took the time to sit there and record their voice and then leave it behind? The bodies are gone. The bodies are cleaned up. But the duffel Why bag's the, there. But there's this magical well, duffel bag. Well, they forget it because the d- duffel bag looks new. Er. And so Ellie finds out that Joel lied to her and she goes, I'll come back to Jackson with you, but you have to tell me the truth. I'll come back to Jackson no matter what it is. And he goes, and all Joel says was, was uh, to make a cure, it would have killed you. That's literally it. That's all Joel says. Joel doesn't say. So I say, stopped them. So I stopped them. Yeah. I'll go back to Jackson, but we're done. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. Whoa. That is a minimum a 30-minute conversation in real life. Minimum. And that was all we were given. It would have killed you, so I stopped them. And he just stops and is like... Well, Joel? we're done. And I was like, what? Joel, you care to explain Joel, the rationale? Joel, are you going to go? No. They, it was, so now I stopped them. And, but that draws this whole narrative. Violence is bad, okay? Fuck you. And, if he, and you know why they did there, that? There, there, there are, there are, there's so much room there for, you know, and Ellie starts crying or something, you know, because she does start crying. And he goes, Ellie, I didn't believe they could do it. And I'm sorry, but I couldn't lose another daughter. He should have said that. Yeah. But nope. Nope. And nope. you know why they did that? You know why? It's because Joel and Abby, they're just the same person by the end of the game. <sighs> oh, yeah, no. No, they're the, not. The, 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 the game the tries girl, so hard to make the them The girl that who, way, no, who bashes not. Joel's skull in with a golf club is just as morally righteous as Joel. Don't you get it? Joel wasn't good and he wasn't bad, but Abby's not good and she's not bad. Yes, it's thank just, you. Yes, thank you. I could have figured that out. That's on my, my own. Twitter voice. That's my Twitter voice. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. actually, you're wrong. You're actually dead the fuck wrong. Actually, we see actions from Abby that, yeah, that she she is actually she's not a good person. And no, we and we know from Joel's past he's done some very bad things. Yes, but there was a redemption arc there. Ellie was his redemption arc. Yes, he is not that person anymore. He has been welcoming. He has been teaching. He has been growing. And now we get to Abby. Oh, before we get to Abby's not segment. Not yet. Not yet. We still have another day with Ellie. So we and go. And I actually mean another day with Ellie. Outside of that, we get like two 30-minute segments. Um, so this is a short one. It is all about the entire the entire day. Seattle is trying to get to day three. Trying to get to the aquarium where uh, supposedly Abby is holed up with her ex-boyfriend, Owen. Right? And so, you know, literally nothing happens until you hit the aquarium where... She breaks in. She holds up Owen and Mel, the, the Mel, cur- who, by the way, is Owen's model. new girlfriend who and is like, pregnant. Yeah, which doesn't matter because you know Owen decided to fuck Abby the night before anyway. Yeah, don't find that out until later. Um, but these are good people. Yeah, no, totally good people, totally. So anyway, actually, Mel was the only good person there. I know Mel and was the only one who actually stuck up for people and tried to help her friends out. 
Yeah, indeed. So Mel, actually, in retrospect, I feel bad for her death. I do, too. Had I known about how important she was before she died, I might have cared about it then, too. Yeah, no, this is the thing. is We find nothing out about these characters until it's, you know, they're dead. And so Owen, um, Ellie's holding them at gunpoint, trying to say, where's Abby, where's Abby, where's Abby? And so she turns to Mel and says, mark it on the map. Kind of a callback there, you know, when Joel mm-hmm, was hunting yeah. for Ellie after David's people took her. And so, but no, and so she sits there and she drops her guard enough for Owen to make a move for the gun. And she, you know, shoots Owen fatally through the chest. Yep. And then Mel freaks out because, you know, that's her boy toy and her baby daddy and tries to stab Ellie, who then because, well, Mel's like four or five months pregnant and we don't know this because she's got a parka on. Oh, I know. Maybe she just fat. Anyway. Uh, No, it was a big jacket. It It was was a big jacket. It was was raining outside. And so, um, you know, so Ellie flips uh, the knife on her and kills Mel. And then you see, oh, and she's, she's, and he's like gurgling and dying and what? And so she looks over and then you see something like cross her eye and she opens up the jacket and sees Mel's pregnant and feels, and so incredibly guilty, just so guilty, just so guilty that this woman that just tried to stab her face is dead now. That was such a force team. There's so many forces. Like I under, I understand. Nobody, and nobody, the whole point, no, nobody remember guys, everything. Violence is bad. That's we the got whole no point. Shit, that was the whole point of the first one. And this, this is why I really get annoyed at this, is because the writers are trying so hard for shock value here, that, you know, this scene didn't need Mel to be pregnant. That is there to make you the player feel guilty. No, that's there for the Martha moment. Well, that too. <laughs> Martha. Martha. Why did you say that name? And it so, comes up. It, it, and it so happens. at this point, miraculously, Jesse and Tommy show up, bust through the door, and they go. It's fine, Ellie. And they, like, shuffle Which, her off. Where the fuck did Tommy come from? And where the fuck did he find Jesse? Because Jesse... Think Jesse, about it. Later on in the game, we see Tommy get knocked into the water. That's a good thing he knows how to swim. Anyway, uh... But think about that. Where the fuck did Tommy come from? Well, he got knocked into the water. Maybe he swam in through the shark tank. I don't know. Um, no, you're absolutely, you're absolutely I, right. I didn't... Like, that hit me in that part, and I didn't say anything. <sighs> no, it's so it's, now uh, it's, you go back to their home base, which is this old school like Broadway theater. I, it's got movie posters, so I think it's actually a movie theater. Well, no, but if you because it had the the thing. Yeah, no, you're right. So it might have been dual purpose. Might have been dual purpose. Yeah, maybe. Pro- it was probably a dual purpose. Of the, yeah. the, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so at this theater, and then there's this moment. Tommy's like, "Yeah, we're all just gonna go back to Jackson because fuck finding the person that killed Joel at this point because they've all given up." Which makes no fucking sense. Well, they're all the dead, band but is back a- together. The, uh, the band is back together, and uh, Abby's whole band is pretty much dead. And l- let's go home. And then all of a sudden, poor we, Jesse. We poor t- Jesse. Jesse and Ellie are talking, and they go to open the door to get into the lobby of the theater. You know, outside of the yeah. And then Jesse gets shot in the face. Just boom. Just and you're like. So, Jesse got shot for opening a door. Rest in peace, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then we get to this intense scene. You put your guns down. Don't shoot. All, you know, put your gun. Blah, blah. And, you know, uh, and biceps, oh, biceps Abby has Tommy by the neck with a gun to his head. And then we go cut to black. And now we are playing as teenage Abby. She's not quite biceps, Abby, yet. She, she's just teenage, uh, Abby. And we play as her for another like eight and a half hours. Something like that, yeah. So this park scene, right? You're in a park, and it's in Salt Lake, so you're probably close to the zoo. And, and now we're talking about Abby. Yes, this is Abby's story. This has always been Abby's story. Joel and Ellie were just well, incidental. Well, yeah, because you, yeah, they were just incidental. This was always Abby's story. That's what this game is. This is The Last of Us 2, Abby's story. That's what this game Which is. Which makes no sense as to why Ellie's on the cover and why it's the Ellie edition for the outside of marketing, right? And so, no, we, we see a teenage Abby, and she's looking for someone, and we find out it's her father, who is just, lo and behold, the surgeon who is going to perform the operation on Ellie. What a coinky dink What a coinky dink But he's a good dad. He, he did good by that zebra. Dick to kids, nice uh, to zebras. <laughs> uh, 
Marlene, even, Marlene even has a small cameo in this, too. not even in this scene where we find out. That's later. That's a different scene. What? That... That when we find out that... Because the scene with him in the park and then the scene with him in the hospital is a different scene. I thought those two were the same scene. Like, one was a cut scene of the other. I thought that's how that... Because that's where Marlene's... Either way, we find out that Abby's dad, even when Marlene... I'll have to check the footage on that one because I'm not going to lie, dude. I am so exhausted from this game. It's all blurred together. and It is. Yeah. So we find... So he goes, we can save mankind. And Marlene's like, but I care for this girl. And he's like, no, but like we can save mankind. And how could you say that? And like, oh, the, the guy's a of, fucking monster. They, all the millions of lives we could say. And it's just like, bro, check your ego. How you can barely save a dozen with this. And that's assuming it works. How the hell are you getting well, the millions? Yeah, no, the guy, the guy wanted to be the guy wanted to be the savior. It's of a mankind. hero complex. And it's even when Marlene complex. looks at him and says, what if it was your daughter? He can't answer. And he goes, we need to do this. And you're like, Fuck you. So he's no, a child legit. murderer. He's a child murderer, and he's perfectly fine with it. And he has no issues killing somebody so that way he can get scientific glory because that's exactly how he comes it's across. It's for his ego. He's doing it because, not for mankind, he's doing it because he wants to be the hero. Well, and you see he even feels fucking bad about it, and he still wants to fucking do it. And I'm like, if you feel bad about something, maybe don't do it. Yeah, right. If you know it's wrong. But Marlene felt bad about trying to kill Ellie in the first one. Maybe she shouldn't have done that. Yeah, right. If so, you feel bad, if you feel like something is evil, maybe don't contribute to that evil. So I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I really don't know the point of the Abby thing. Like, I, I've seen it talked about as a side quest. It really does feel like a side quest. It's a fucking side quest. There, and there's so many convoluted, unique characters. And then she pairs up with fucking Aang. And then her and Aang <laughs> got to go on I'll this. I'll be a little bit more descriptive than that, but that is what, how we were addressing it. They, they, they find the, this. The kid the, looks like Aang. It, the fucking kid looks like Aang. And it's, uh, it's a little girl who uh, has decided that she feels that she is a little boy, so it is re- uh, referred so, to so as the, a he for most of the game. But the way the clothes looked, the, the shaved head, we just went with Aang. This is Aang. And there's a lot of Avatar jokes here. So anyway. But... So, no, and so, you know, the first day is all about, you know, getting to know the crew. And I, I'm not going to lie. Owen and Manny are kind of dicks just anyway. Owen and Manny are di- So the first day with Abby, because here's the thing. We already saw Ellie kill all these people. We watched Ellie. Well, outside ki- of Manny. But except yeah. for Manny, which yeah. is fine. Whatever. I don't care. Which he's just a stand-in for Neil Druckmann anyway. That, that's supposed to be. That's the rumor. Anyway, that's just that. That's he, it funny. looks just it's, like him. It, but it, anyway. it's, it's a little eerie. But, but here's the problem is we get introduced to all Abby's friends, but it doesn't matter because the, we watched. We, we, and, and not only that, they showed no remorse for killing Joel. None. None. And even and Mel, Ellie, sweet little Mel goes, he deserved worse. And it's just like, we get it, writers. We get it, writers. You hate Joel. You think that Joel is an evil person, and so you're trying to tell everybody this. And that's exactly what they were trying to do. The writers of this game it's believe so that preachy. Joel made the it wrong. Is so it's so preachy. It's fucking hugely preachy. But here's the problem is now we need to spend the next eight to ten hours to try to get to know this character who just bashed in our surrogate father's head. Who We need to get to know her friends who and we just killed. And our main character who, who we played as in the last game. Yeah. And now we need to go with Ellie, and, and, and now we need to find out about all these characters that we killed so we can feel something for them, which right before they all died anyway, they said horrible crap about Joel and us anyway. They felt no remorse for what they did. It wasn't like they had a quick turnaround. It was, No, they were dicks in the beginning. They're dicks, dicks in, in the, the end. end. And so and this entire chapter is just trying to, this sympathy for the devil bullshit, and it ends with uh, Abby getting knocked out by some mountain of a person. I, I think it's a woman, but I'm not gonna lie. I was so I was paying so little attention last Dude, night. Dude, you and it I were doing voices at this point. I know, and this this is what this game reduces to is that in order to just get through, he and I were sitting there and just practicing, just doing voices for our own amusement. You know, as you're doing the Smeagol voice, oh, well, it does look cross. It, right, and you I, know that's like, like for like what an hour, at least if not an hour and a half, because we just couldn't be bothered at this point. Abby was so uninteresting, lacked, like and. Because nothing happened. We killed some Seraphites. Still don't know what their motives are. We finally met the leader of Abby's group, which is a dude named Isaac. Yeah. 
Don't know what his deal is, but nope. he's, he's, his nope, name is Isaac. He, but he, he's Isaac, he's the leader, and you're my best soldier, Abby, and I... And, and that's about all we get. And so and then, it ends with her being abducted by the, the Scars or the Seraphites, same group. Um, and then uh, we cut to a, another uh, flashback you know, scene, and then where she's like visiting Owen, who's her ex, in the middle of like Christmas, and then... They do some flirty banter bullshit, and, and then then it, after it's one that, tree it, hill, it's, and then after I, that I, it goes into another flashback scene. And we were calling it one shroom hill at one point because mushrooms, yeah, we were calling it one shroom hill, yeah, yeah one yeah, mushroom yeah, hill, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and then uh, it was, and then the, the love triangle bull. If you love love triangles, if you loved love triangles, well, how about two? Welcome to the Last of Us Part Two, where the love triangles are real. And the plot means nothing. Yo, dog, I heard you like love triangles, so I put a love triangle in your love triangle in your love triangles. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. what it was. <laughs> and it's just like, stop. So, anyway. So, we have this flashback scene, and I think it's only the one at this point. And it's real brief. It's them just being awkward. We're exes, but we're friends nonsense, right? Which is stupid, anyway. You know, if people can make it work, go for it. But th- that's, there's a reason that shit happens in sitcoms. Um, <laughs> yeah. So then we come to the forest, and the, the Seraphites are going to hang Abby. And they're going to hang this other girl named uh, Yara. Yara. And or as I like to call her, Captain Hook would have to hook. <laughs> call her the one-armed bandit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we'll get there. <laughs> um, and then, you know, right before. And like, or I mean like, this is also known as Aang's older sister. It's the Avatar's older sister. It really is. That, that's actually the character relationship. <laughs> yeah, that's the character. And, and the so person we called the Avatar. Which, what the fuck was that? Lev. Lev. Lev was the person's name. Yeah. So Lev and Yara are sisters, but Lev is identifying as a boy. So, but anyway, so yeah, it's Lily, but it's Lev. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And so, and so, but and, also known as Avatar. And so, but because the characterization in this game is so paper thin, we just called him Ang. <laughs> We couldn't figure it out. And um, we were just like, oh, hey, that looks like Aang. It's Aang. Well, because, you know, the uh, vaguely tan robes, the shaved head. Yeah. It's Aang. Uh, But um, so anyway, right. And like literally the second before, you know, Abby is executed, hung uh, from a a tree, like good old Lynchian style. It's, uh, you know, the uh, arrows start flying. You're trying to figure out who's saving. No, it turns out it's one one person, and it's the fucking avatar. It, yeah, it, it's Lev. Yeah, you yeah. know, come to save Aang, his sister. Aang shows up. Yeah, come to, to save his sister, and it's um, you know, and they're you know they're seraphites. They're scars. The sworn enemy of the wolves. We don't know why. Which are the uh, we, we, WLF. We and that is never actually explained. And yeah, and it's just like. We yeah. don't know why they're at war. And Abby's we never a find this out. after the. I don't know. She was a firefly, and then she joined up with these people. And we yeah. have no idea what's. We going don't even on. know how she found them. Like I mean, well, none Utah of that's ain't exactly close to Seattle. And so then um, after that, oh oh, and so but the but the Seraphites they break, uh, Big Sister's arm with like shatter it with a hammer, which then causes like four hours of plot bullshit. And I'm not gonna lie, for a game that you know claims to be so against violence, they certainly show a lot of very graphic violence, like even more than the last game. Oh yeah, oh there's some violence. I just straight up looked away from. It. I was just like, you know, like I mean, you know, nope. you know, I, I'm not usually one of these guys that sits there and goes, you know, you know, I the your violence is too much. But you know, if you're gonna sit there and just get preachy about how violence is so bad, please stop reveling in it. Like you know, Gears of War was at least honest. Yeah. And so it was honest about what it was. So anyway, you know, these characters, and then there's a big, long chase scene. And keep in mind, these are supposed to be sworn enemy factions. And Abby oh, just out oh, of... Oh, and by the way, did oh. we mention... I'm so sorry. Did we mention that this whole time we're playing as Abby is during the... We, so we had day one, two, three with, uh, with, with Ellie. And now we're doing the same timeline. And now we're doing the same timeline, but we're starting back at day one, one. but with Abby. Yeah. So we can then catch up to where we literally were. So we literally had to do a 10 hour. It's a 10 hour side quest. It's an eight to 10 hour side quest. And it, it destroys the pacing of this game. It, what little there was. <sighs> and, um, so anyway, so now all of a sudden Abby has this change of heart and wants to go save the Seraphite sisters. Well, brother and sister. Anyway, she um, wants to sing Ang and big sister. Yes. And so, you know, well, I mean, saving the avatar, because I know the avatar will well, save yeah, the world. Know. Yeah, he's yeah. He'll get frozen. I, I just don't so. know where Appa was. Anyway. Um, I don't know. They should have yip yipped. That would have helped with yeah, the yeah, you know, no tower kidding. section. Which, yeah, right. by the way, 
that is actually one thing. Is that tower section? That that looked really good. That that actually, that actually like, gave me vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> the the visuals in this. No, game. no, uh, the, the the technical artistry, the the ability to render and make a video game is still very much intact. It's the ability to tell a story I have an issue with. Um. So anyway, so we get to back. She takes um, big sister and Ang back to the. Uh, Back to the aquarium where Owen, her ex-boyfriend, is, you know, uh, is pulled there. up. And Mel, who is also a doctor, just in case you didn't feel bad enough about killing her. Yeah. She's not Not only, only is she pregnant, not only is she Owen's girlfriend, but, but she's, she's also a doctor. Yeah. Which, and by so the way, it shouldn't matter that it shouldn't matter by this point that it's Owen's pregnant girlfriend because Owen just fucked Abby the night before. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that's part, Before she decides, Abby decides to go back and rescue these two Seraphites. There, there's this incredibly awkward sex scene between her and Owen. Like it's it is incredibly Owen awkward. It, it's just it's just doggy style. But it's, it, but it's so forced. It is so forced. It, it is awkward, and it comes out of nowhere, and it's awkward. It had no place in this game. It was no. It is, it is so awkward. Anyway, they could have because they started to have a fight, and then they could have said, "You know what? I'm done," and walked away. And instead, the writers were like, "What if they fucked?" Uh, basically, honestly, I bet you anything that was the conversation. That's probably what it was. And so, anyway, so Mel needs medical supplies to treat Yara's big sister's arm, and they're going to amputate because, yeah. well, they got bashed in with a hammer, and, you know, we can't necessarily cast that, and that would be a trick and a half even with modern medicine, let alone what you and, have laying and around so in the aquarium. instead of just cutting it with a knife and cauterizing it... We have to go on this, like, two-hour two hour side quest. So... So now Biceps, Abby, so now Biceps Abby and the Avatar have to go and find medical uh, surgical supplies to do surgery to cut off, you know, Avatar's big sister's arm for character and so, and so, and building. So, and so this is Char- such a Char- yeah, yeah, something like that. And so and this is just how contrived this plot is getting at this point, right? And if I look tired, it's because I am. Uh, even talking about this game is fatiguing sometimes. So we go on this big, long journey through some sort of sky bridge, which looked amazing. It did look amazing. I don't know why Appa wasn't there, but anyway. So it looked amazing. Yeah, and so you, it's a big, long, you know, set piece moment on the bridge. You fall. You have to go through this inf- infested building with infected. You finally show up at the hospital where Abby's group has, you know, been, you know, using it. And she goes in to get the medical su- medical supplies, and it turns out she's been listed as AWOL, and they try and arrest her. In fact, they do arrest her. They handcuff her in an elevator. Well, she's been gone for 24 hours. Why? I don't know. Because she's been listed as AWOL. Okay. And so Nora, the one of the Ellie's targets that we've already Who's killed. already dead. We've already we've, killed we've her. Already killed her because Ellie. remember, we're doing days one through three already. And so, actually, we've even Again. seen this conversation. This conversation that happens between Abby and Nora, we've seen already when Ellie was climbing through the building so anyway so we have to go down into the infested part of the hospital where apparently however long these guys have been here they just never bothered to go clean out right they have an entire military organization but you know fuck it we don't need to clear that out what happens if a zombie or two gets up here and supposedly federal was anyway and so we 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 go down there we have to do a bunch of power nonsense and then we literally fight the blob this thing is a bloater fused with like three clickers more than that this thing was weird. It was a Resident Evil monster. It was a Resident Evil boss. It and truly I was. was like, cause, and I even said something. I was like, what did I say? I said something about like, are we going to find like the mother shroom down here? And we found the mother shroom. Uh, it really was the mother shroom. And like, I, like this thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. This, this breaks the canon. Because it does. We've never seen this before. We'll probably never see it again. But you know what? It's there to be a bullet spongy boss fight. A really, really bullet and spongy so boss. Keep we in mind, I played this on easy for expedience, and it took literally every bullet I had, plus the flamethrower. And so we finally get the medical supplies. We fight off Mother Shroom, and now we go back to meet Avatar so we can get Avatar's sister her surgery, which then happens... Which then they all decide they want to go to Santa Barbara, but Avatar because supposedly feel, there are fireflies but Ava- there. But but Avatar and Big Sister are from uh, a, a religious group that doesn't like the, the Seraphites. The, yeah, they don't like the fact that Avatar decided that you know he wasn't a girl anymore, 
And there's this under messaging of be, don't be a bigot, oh. which that got fucking preaching. Oh no, there, shit. there, there's a scene where um, so. Yara, the big sister, is talking about Lev, yeah. and it, it's you know this and conversation, and it just comes across as such a lecture. It is a they, it, it, they, it is a scene where they are they lecturing the audience. They didn't even want to mention the fact that this was a young lady who decided she was going to identify as a he. They were so afraid to say that because they didn't want to break. I don't even know, but it's not bad to say, hey, I was this way once and now I'm this way. And they didn't want to say that. And I don't understand why that's a bad thing. But anyway. No, you had to find out from the enemies. They go, Lily, you can't escape. And then he yeah, goes. Yeah, because the enemies are bad. Yeah, cause, so it's okay for the enemies. But this, this scene is an entire lecture. But it turns out, you know, the Avatar, you know, Aang doesn't want to leave without confronting his mother about how she needs to accept him for who he is. Because, you know, obviously going with overly zealous religious types, that's going to go well. This doesn't. So, and you're going on to an island that is incredibly hostile to you, that is trying to kill you on site. What part of this seems like a bad idea? So they go to the island where the religious nut jobs live. That's where that's where. Ang- and can I just can I just ask why why is Abby so committed? We never get an answer for that. Why is Abby so committed? to No, this? we just I have to do this. I need to do this. That's all we was got. Was it trying to make up for you know killing Joel? Was it trying to make up for killing all the Seraphites? Like, maybe what, what was a, she trying maybe to make up for? Because she's a shitty person. She kills for her own needs. She fucks for her own needs. She saves people for her own needs. She doesn't do anything for other people, it's, unless it benefits her. So now we are on Avatar and Big Sister's home island with we're, Biceps, we're, we're Abby, the, we're and the Big temple. Sister. We're at the Air Temple. We're at the Air Temple. So now it's this island off of the coast. They don't, of they don't all shave their heads. I'm just yeah. being a dick. And so anyway, uh, so now Abby and uh, Biceps, Abby, and Big Sister got to go get the Avatar. Which by the time we go in there, we find out that Avatar had killed his mom because mom tried to attack him and shoved mom onto a thing. And mom's dead. It was an accident. And by this point, we just don't care. And, and it's now a, we went matricide. You know, violence is bad, okay? But apparently, matricide is okay as long as it's in self defense. And so now, biceps, Abby, big sister, and Avatar got to get the hell out of Dodge because we've made a lot of ruckus going in to find Avatar. And it turns out that the wolves are attacking at the same time that Lev's there trying to visit exact- his mom. And at the same time that Abby and, and Yara are, show up. And the Biceps Abby's group. So Biceps Abby's wolves are on Avatar's island. And there's a war between the Avatar people and the fucking Bicep Abby's people. And then the Avatar big sister and Abby just kind of get caught in the middle. And you know what? This could have been a very good scene. It I, looked amazing. It is this looked, the scene I laughed my ass off at? We're getting to it. No, this whole oh. war scene and this, you know struggle over this island is uh rendered very very well and there's a um a part that we'll get to in here just a second that is truly breathtaking but no so here's what happens right is that we've met up with lev ang and um we're we're trying to avatar we're we're trying to get to the boat and we literally again it's the jesse thing all over again yara big sis walks right out that door and capped right in the chest so the three of them. So we literally went on three hours worth of quests and missions to save Big Sister because her arm was infected and it needed to be amputated. We went on three to four hours amputated, but yeah. worth of missions so we could hack that bitch off so that way and only to literally watch her get capped in the dome. I, and then, can I please describe this, please? Oh, yeah. Please, she, gets capped, she gets capped in the chest, right? So she chest, slumps over. Chest, something. Yeah, she, she keels over. And so Lev, chest, yeah. Yeah, Lev runs over and, you know, Yara, wake up. Yara, please move. And, Yara, Yara, Yara. And then Abby pulls him away and says, we've got to go. And then the wolves show up. And Isaac, the boss, who we've seen, what, once before now, mm-hmm. shows up. And he literally steps over Yara. Holds a gun on Abby, says... Steps over a- big sis. Yeah. Holds a gun on biceps, Abby, and Avatar. And says, you know, you have three seconds to move in before he can pull the trigger. Let me he do gets- it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. He gets Please. fucking shot by Yara. Please wait, go. Wait, okay, okay. Please go. Okay, so now big sis is laying on the ground, who's not dead yet. And he's gonna this shoot scene, biceps, scene, Abby, and Avatar. Scene. Isaac is gonna shoot biceps, Abby, and Avatar. And big sis caps him in the back. And he drops. Oh <laughs> and she's God. laying there on the ground. <laughs> and as she's laying there on the ground, they don't go, oh, she's alive. And tack, you know, and they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they riddle both. her with bullets. Like seven people. Brr, and they animated the body. 
<laughs> on the ground. And I just it's started like, loop. It's like I was something like, out of Tarantino. We just went on four hours worth of side mission to save your ass. And the ending we get is... <laughs> I lost it. It was just like, what was the point of this? There was no that. There the was point no of this character development. There was no payoff. There was no lesson learned. There was no nothing. It was an ego trip for Abby that ended in failure. And now she not only killed a, and betrayed a bunch of her own people. She got Yara killed. Big sister killed. Like I, it, this what this did not need to be in the game. This was such a waste of time. And then we go back to the aquarium. Abby finds out her friends are dead and then finds the conveniently placed map that uh, Ellie drops, then goes yeah. to confront Ellie. And now we're back at where we were 10 hours ago. And so let's talk about this scene. We Now we see it from Abby's point of view. So she comes in with Lev, and Lev is a bully. Avatar. Avatar. I use the proper names because otherwise I'll forget who I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, you know, he sweeps in with the bow. Um, you know, Abby's got the fucking gun and then we get Abby's perspective where, you know, she holds Tommy up, you know, kicks him a bit, gets him on his knees. The door opens. She caps Jesse. Ellie throws her gun away because apparently she trusts. And then so Tommy makes a move and gets shot in the head and they just or what o- looks like he got shot. Yeah, I know. And then he j- they just glance over. It. And by the way, I'm sorry, without access to modern surgery, he's dead. There is no surviving that. And then Ellie is now a boss fight. Ellie it is, is a ripoff a of the David bad boss guy fight. Boss fight. Ellie is a ri- the Ellie fight is a ripoff of the David and fight from The Last of Us One, where you have to sneak around and do stealth attacks. And I'm not gonna lie, for at least the first couple of times, I just let Ellie kill me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a boss fight, and then here's the Martha moment. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, after the uh, Martha Abby was beats great. the living shit out of Ellie. Um, Dina shows up and tries to Dina, stab her. Dina, who is the girlfriend of Ellie. Yeah. I haven't talked about her in a while. Gee, I wonder why. Because I've fucking seen her in a while. Or and, cared. And, uh, well, the game never cared, so why should we? Well, we shouldn't. And so she flies out of nowhere and starts hacking at Abby. And so Abby starts beating her face in and then holds a knife to her throat. And Ellie goes, no, stop. She's pregnant. Which Abby then Mama. goes, which then Abby... Because Abby just saw her pregnant friend who is dead. Good. And I'm like, and I'm literally sitting there and I'm and like, Abby goes I'm like, wait, good. did they just do a Martha moment? They did. But they the thing, did it the didn't, fucking it didn't, Martha moment. But it didn't work on Abby. It worked on Lev. Yeah. And so Avatar goes, you can't do that. Airbenders don't kill. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> That's what he said. That's pretty much what Avatar said. Essentially. You don't. We, Airbenders don't kill. I'm sorry. There's no fucking. That's exactly what they fucking said. And then we get this not so happily ever after because Ellie's still got to. And then, yeah, and then like and, and, literally, and, 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 this st- is handled so weirdly. So we leave Abby. Um, Abby, leaves Abby leaves Ellie leaves to live for the second time. For the second time after she just hunted down and killed all her friends, her lover, and his lover, and all of this, she li- lets Ellie live. And, but anyway, so Ellie's, you know, bleeding and broken on the ground. You know, Dina ain't doing so great either. And then we just flash forward to this farm. And I mean, this farm is like idyllic. Like this is like. It's you picture know, perfect. It is picture perfect. The hills, the grain, the sunset. And, and I'm sitting there going this whole time going, is, is, is this real? Is, is, is this a dream sequence? I was like, like this is the end. This has to be the end. No. No, no it's not. No, it's to it's show not. that Ellie. Who so so Dina had the baby and the baby looks about six to seven months now so it's like a good year and a half later it's at least eighteen months and at so least maybe it, two it, years it's, yeah and so Ellie and Dina are raising the baby and then Tommy shows up who the whole thing Tommy went after the killers so that way Ellie wouldn't have to and now Tommy looks at Ellie and says you go do this you promised me and I'm like where the fuck did so basically Tommy died. When he got shot. Well, you know, you got to figure that when people have a near-death experience, they can have often have personality changes. Shut the fuck up, dude. That's <laughs> such a control. And then we do this bullshit farm scene. We go back, and now we're playing And, I, and here, here, Here's the thing that really pissed me off, and we were talking about this uh, right after this scene happened, is that these scenes needed to be flipped, right? Is that these scenes needed to be flipped. It needed to be that... Tommy was all gung-ho to go after these people back, 
you know, when we first started the game after Joel died, and then be like, Ellie, they got what they deserved. You bled them. Move on. Joel wouldn't want you to be consumed by this. You know, all the usual revenge, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you have Dina say, you know, you know, thank you for trying to talk some sense or have Ellie be the obsessed one. But no, one. but Tommy but no. was the bad guy because remember, Tommy and Joel are just bad people they're and we can't let people. you forget that Tommy and Joel are bad. No, they're just bad people. And they're then violent. Basically, they just, basically they're blood, for the rest of the, 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 last, the last hour of the game just doesn't matter. You end up in this contrived bullshit story to get Ellie and Abby together for one final death match and guess what? So let's walk through it real quick just for the sake of Theronis because we're, we're almost done. We are almost done here. So we are hunting for the Fireflies, and just so happens, yeah, Abby's able to contact Fireflies. They're actually not gone because just howdy doody, how lucky is that? And then, so then we meet up with Ellie, who's trying to hunt for Abby. We get a bunch of force combat, and then we reach a, a new faction called the Rattlers. And the only reason I know their name is because the subtitles fucking told me. Yeah, had we not had subtitles turned on, we wouldn't have known this. And so we kill a bunch of them, free their prisoners. No idea what their deal is, but, you know, it's great. It's not important. Something about they have people in, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I know. They're basically uh, Woodsbury, uh, Woodbury from uh, Walking Dead because they have the chained, yeah, you know, in fact. It's so I, weird. It's very weird. And so then we get that, you know, the, we finally get the prize fight, right? And Ellie lets her go. And then goes back, and because Ellie went off to go kill the person, Ellie loses everything because she went to go try to defend Joel's death. And remember, Joel's a bad guy, so anybody that does anything for Joel, they lose everything. And the last scene Jeez. we see with Ellie is, and during this fight, Abby bites off like her... Uh, two, two of her fingers, her yeah, ring finger and her, her pinky. pinky. And so she's sitting there on her left hand, so she's sitting there trying to play guitar. You know. But she doesn't have these two fingers, which is unbelievably hard. And so she can't grip the guitar right, so and she can't make proper chords anymore. And so it's this really, you know, bad sounding, and there's this, you know, kind of like, well, you really shouldn't have done that now. Oh, and by the way, Dina left. Dina left Yeah, her. Dina left with the baby because Dina didn't want her to go find the killers who killed, you know, her, I guess, surrogate father She was father -in -law. all gung-ho to go before, but now it's uh, like everybody switched. switched. And I get things switching. changed. But no, it's dumb, and but. so... And then we have this bullshit flashback scene, which what the fuck was the point of that scene to finally? No, I have no idea what the point of that scene was. Like one final scene with Joel and Ellie, which there was. It, you know, that scene might have been OK if it was at the front of the game, not literally the second to last. I still scene. don't know the point of the game. I still don't know. The there point is no it. point to this game. It is a clusterfuck of a story. It is the actual a plot is so threadbare that it happens over 72 hours. There is no character development. There is more character assassination in this than I. <sighs> Characters don't act. Ellie, Ellie is waxes it's and waves between a bunch of situations. And they were like, they it's a collection of events. They wrote situations and said, here's the situation they go. And they never stopped to ask, would the characters do this? No. They, 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 just, they, they had their events that they wanted to happen, and they shoehorned the characters into getting there. It is the same thing I've been criticizing writing for for a long time now. Is you write characters? They did it in the Last Jedi. They did it in uh, Game of Thrones season eight. They've done it in. Uh, they did it in uh, Ghostbusters 2016. They they've did done it. it in so many things. You contrive a bunch of events and then shoehorn your characters to make it there, as opposed to writing a bunch of characters and a loose, you know, set of events and then letting them grow together. That's what the first game did. This one failed to do it so hard. And that is our review. My God, what a draining game. You're going to uninstall after this, right? Oh, God, yeah. Thank you so much for watching our review. What a disappointment. Oh, the last of us. What a disappointment. Don't spend your money. If you did spend your money, I am so sorry. And I wish I could help with the pain you're feeling. Well, right we now. are trying to help with the... Well, we can't help with the pain, but we can help people avoid that pain. Watch our review. Like, share, subscribe. And all that. Hopefully... We use our voices loud enough to show how you dog. You're wrong. And we you're will not see as smart as you think you are. We'll see you guys next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.